We've just been looking at conservation of energy and saying that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it just changes form. What we can maybe do is add a little thing to it. We can say this, that the total energy is constant. That's what we mean here, that the total energy is constant, where total energy is just equal to you know E potential plus kinetic plus whatever. So this here, this means E T, that's the total energy. That means, you know, if you can add up all the different parts of it, if you added up all the different uh, types of energy in one situation, you'd have the total energy before equals the total energy after. And we looked at this little PHET animation where we could take a look at little skateboarder who was going up and down an incline and looking at his height and seeing how the energy was changing from potential to kinetic and back and forth. Well, now we can consider an example. We can consider dropping an egg, which is initially at rest, from a building that's 100 meters high. And the question is, how fast will the egg be going just before it hits the ground? So maybe we can consider this situation. So maybe I'll just draw it here. So I'll have uh, some sort of, uh, maybe I'll actually draw it in black. So let's just say I have, well, I have some building. So I need to draw a building. So there's my building and there's the ground. And so there's the building here with little, maybe little windows or something like that. I don't know, whatever. But over here, though, we have some sort of egg here. And the egg is being dropped. So the egg starts here, it drops down to the bottom, and then it goes splat. So the question is then, you know, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? Now, there's two ways, or two easy ways at least, of solving this. One is to use what we've looked at before, which is, well, because the egg um, is under the influence of gravity and gravitational force will be constant, that means we're going to have a constant acceleration, so we could use the equations of accelerated motion, of uniform accelerated motion, that is. So we could use those four equations of motion to solve this. But I want to show you using energy. It turns out this is really helpful for us. So let's do it with energy instead. So, in this case, let's consider the, well, we know that the total energy will be conserved. So we know that ET will be constant. In other words, if we could find, remember, ET was equal to, um, well, EK plus EP. We're going to need to know that. We're also going to need to know, well, EK, don't forget, it's half MV squared. That's your, that's your kinetic energy. And you also need to know that your potential energy is just MGH. That's your gravitational potential energy on Earth, at sea level, at least. So there we go. We need to know these. Now let's take a look over here, though, and see what's happening. At the very top, let's take a look at this. We're going to consider kinetic and potential energies. Now it turns out the masses will be, well, that's not changing. G isn't changing. But your velocity is changing, and your height is changing. So let's consider then at the very top right here what's happening. We have that the um, height is equal to 100 meters at the top here. And we know that your velocity is zero. I hope that makes sense because it's initially at rest. How about at the bottom right here? What happens there? Well, there we have height equals zero. And we have the velocity is, well, something that I want. And it turns out that's what I'm trying to find. So if we can calculate this, then we're done, because that's what we want. We want to know how fast it goes just as it hits the ground. Obviously, after it hits the ground, well, it's going zero, right? So that's what we're considering. Just as it hits the ground, how fast is it going? Well, we can use this energy here. So it turns out the height, that tells you something about the potential energy. Now, rather than plug in all the values, I'm going to leave them generic just to show you that because this right here will help for any situation with any object dropped from rest from a certain height. This, this way I'm going to show you will help. We'll just put in the numbers at the end. So because it has some sort of height here, we could say then that the potential energy is just m times g times h, whatever its mass is times you know 9.81 times whatever its height is. And its kinetic energy because that's half mv squared and v is zero, ek is zero. Therefore, I can find my total energy is just mgh plus zero. In that case, it's just mgh. Hope that makes sense. That's the total energy. Uh, we can consider this sort of at time one, I guess we could say, or at the start. Well, at the end, what happens? 
Well, there we've got potential energy equals, let's see, the height is zero, so mgh, that'll give me zero. And then my kinetic energy, well, it'll just be half m times whatever that speed is squared. And therefore, my total energy will just be, well, zero plus half mv squared, so one half mv squared. This is the key thing, though. These two right here, they are the same. These two right here are the same thing. So because of that, then, I can say this. mgh equals 1 half mv squared. See, at this top part equals this one. Well, look what happens. The masses cancel out. That's nice, because I didn't tell you the mass. And it turns out this better not matter, because uh, from what we know about regular physics, uh, this should be independent of mass. So it doesn't matter. Thankfully, the masses cancel out, so that's good. Well, that means then that I have, well, I want to get V by itself here, so maybe I'll rewrite it. So I'll put the V squared over 2, I'll put that on the left side, just to make it a little bit easier to look at, uh, equals G times H. See, I've just, well, I said V squared times 1 is just V squared, and it's divided by 2, so I just put the 2 over. Now, what happens then? I want to get V by itself, so I can get rid of this divided by 2 by doing the opposite, so that means I multiply both sides by 2. I can do that because, remember, if I multiply both sides by positive 2, 2 over 2 will just give me a 1. That means it'll essentially just disappear. So I could say then that v squared is going to equal 2gh. And therefore, if I want v, v will just be, well, again, I have to do the opposite of it. So square root of both sides will undo that. That means I'll take the square root of 2 times g times h. This works in general for any situation where you have an initial speed of 0. You know, and you're looking at the very bottom thing. So that'll work for this type of situation here. And that means then if I want my final speed, well, that will be just, now I'll just plug in the numbers. So 2 times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. That's always the case on Earth. Times the height, which in this case is 100. And I could use my trusty calculator to do that. So let me just clear this. So I could say 2 times 9.81 times 100, and that will give me this. And I take the square root of that. I like to do it this way. Some people like to do it all in one step. As long as you know how to do it, it's fine. This gives me roughly 44 meters per second. So I'm going to say that. So V is, so therefore, V is approximately 44 meters per second. So I could consider then, uh, okay, well, that was nice. That's a nice way to do it. We can solve that. Now, what if we had wanted to do this a different way? Now, remember, you could have solved this using the equations of motion. You could have just done it um, by you know, this other method right here. Remember this other way. So I'm going to just say or. Use uh, accelerated motion equations. So I'm going to do this a little bit faster this time, just to show you that we still could have done this in the old way. So it turns out we had a choice here. We could have used the accelerated motion equations. So there we could say, well, I like to write u, v, a, s, t. Remember, u is the initial speed, v is the final speed, a is the acceleration, s is displacement, and t is the time. And in this case right here, well, initial speed is 0. Final speed, I don't know, but I want that. Acceleration, well, because it's uh, on Earth, it's going down with 9.81. And it's important here, its displacement will be negative 100 because it starts here and it finishes lower than where it started. So that'll be a negative. And this time will be, well, question mark. And then I could take a look at my four equations of motion and it turns out, let's see, I want one that doesn't have any t. So that means I can use this one, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Remember, s is your displacement. So in this case right here, because u is 0, that just gives me v equals, well, 2 times a times s, and then I take the square root of that. Hey, look at this. 2 times a times s is the same thing as 2 times 9.81 times the displacement. So look at that. The speed then is square root of 2 times 9.81, well, in this case, negative, times negative 100. But negative something times negative something gives you a positive. And look, I'm doing the exact same thing. So I'll still get 44 meters per second. Now, we were, of course, assuming that we had no air resistance here, and we had no other losses. So that was fine. 
Now it turns out we can solve all sorts of crazy situations with this method. It doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't have to start off with zero speed. It turns out you could do some crazier example where, um, I mean, I've seen, what I like to do is actually uh, other examples. And you know what? I'll do another video and we'll actually show a different example, this time with a crazy roller coaster. Yeah, I think I'll show you that. So uh, check out the next video. We'll do an even weirder looking example and yet it's super easy to solve by using energy.